Man, so I am here with Detroit rapper Kid Vicious. You may know him from the official remix of Eminem's Detroit versus Everybody and his Sikkim mixtape series. What's good with you? It's a pleasure. A pleasure, my G. Salute to you. Mo Thanks Mo for having me on here. Most definitely, man. I'm uh, a huge fan <coughs> of uh, Detroit rappers. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember, like, you know, when I was in high school, I got, like, this mixtape. This is before Eminem got signed and had, like, you know, like, early Eminem songs that he recorded. And then, like, of course, like, you know, uh, your older brother, Royce the 5'9", like, you know, is on his debut album and stuff and everything. So, like, I, I tuned in with him early, like, you know, and stuff and everything and just have been following, like, the whole Detroit music scene. I'm from Chicago, so... You know, we got a yeah. lot of for Detroit artists. That's what's up, man. I shit, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I be feeling the same way. I be feeling like it's a lot of people here who should get like credit, but I don't feel like we be getting the proper credits. But I think that's what fuel us and keep us ready to to keep going and and do amazing things. Oh yeah, man! Like the Midwest is just like a uh has a plethora of talented artists. And like, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of like, you know, artists and stuff that, you know, uh, haven't gotten the credit, like, you know, from Detroit specifically, like, who are some of the artists you feel like, you know, are like underappreciated in the city? All of them, to be honest with you, Royce, M, like uh, Street Lord Wine, all of them, Guilty Simpson, like, I just feel like Elzai, I feel like these dudes are like some of the highest level, yeah, like Black Belt. You know what I'm saying? And and it's just like when people talk about lyricists, it feels like shit is changing. Like the, um, their definition is changing and these dudes get overlooked all the time. And I know Eminem get a lot of credit, but he also get discredited a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, yeah, like I, I interviewed Bizarre V12 and we had talked about that in the past. And he was saying like, you know, there's... A lot of people and stuff and everything who seemingly like try to make it seem like Eminem like wasn't like you know listened to in the hood and like you know and stuff and everything. I remember like you know and stuff like walking down the street like you know the time like when he was dropping like up to his second album you would hear his music like in the hood, you know and stuff and everything where everyone was playing that like out the speakers and stuff you know. Dog, uh, and I was younger, and I I remember it like it's yesterday. The, the same guys just acting like they wasn't listening to Eminem is just straight up lying. I'm talking about street dudes too. Like to say that you weren't, like I'm not saying that that's, that's something that they was bumping all the time, but everybody was loving that shit, bro. Everybody was loving that. You got you got a select few that just, they hate anybody that ain't a part of their crew. You right. get what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you don't make the kind of music we make or you're not a part of my crew, it's, 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 it's fuck you anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you gonna have those type people, but for the most part, man, Eminem had Detroit on fire, bro. That eight mile movie, everybody wanted to be in it. A hundred percent, you know. Everybody <laughs> just wanted a, a a chance. They was they was they was preferring Eminem over everybody because Eminem was doing stuff. So yeah, that's a tripped out situation, bro. Yeah, and like you know, uh, to be connected to you know, your brother who, like, you know, was on the debut album and, like, you know, definitely experienced, like, you know, uh, some musical success in part to that, that situation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, uh, Royce and M, as a, as a, as a pair, I'm, shit, I'm trying to think of who you would even compare them to. Like, who else, uh, what other two MCs no, the only have The only similarity up? I can think is uh, AZ and Nas. That's like in hip hop. Yeah. Like, you know, stuff where it could be like comparable. And what are those guys? Legends. Absolute, undeniable legends. And those are the only two people who you can compare those guys to. That's crazy. Yeah. So how do you front on that? You know what I'm saying? It's weird. But that's hip hop. We, uh, <laughs> we created it, but we don't control it. A hundred percent, man. Um, you know, I understand, like, growing up, like, you didn't want to, like, be a rapper initially. You were, like, into basketball? Yeah, that was my first love. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing, boy. That's all I wanted to do was hoop every day. I wasn't thinking about writing no raps. <laughs> Man, not even thinking uh, about it. Uh, that's though, were you a fan of the uh, Detroit Pistons? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, the bad boys, both of them, the original and, and Chauncey and the. Yeah, yeah, that was um. I mean, that was just a part of my life. I don't really watch basketball a lot too much nowadays, <clears throat> but yeah, niggas couldn't pull me away from the court at first. I start rapping just playing around, you know what I mean? Just playing around with my boys, and then people start saying that I was good, and Roy should hear me. And, uh, yeah, he heard me. He he liked it. And then mm, I probably had, like, 64 total bars, and I was on tour with him. And he had pulled me on stage to rap in front of these crowds. And I had never even done a cypher before. You know what I'm saying? So. It's weird, but it was tough. It was tough, but I fought through that shit though. Man, that's an incredible opportunity. Like, um, when did you start like, you know, uh, developing like, you know, your songwriting, like, you know, you're gonna put out a, a project. See, that was the thing. I was so green to hip hop initially that um, I had to really start going on the road with my brother. You know what I mean? And he had somebody on the road with him also at the time. So it was three of us. And um, that was a fight because the person that was there already didn't want me there. He felt like uh, that's just he on my, he's stepping on my toes too much. The girls, the girls ain't just looking at it like, oh, it's, it's him and Royce. Now nah, it's this other dude who starting to step on my toes. And he just it was just a, um, a super awkward vibe for me. And um. Uh, I was trying to learn that. And then I'm trying to get better with my verses. So I'm just trying to write more raps. And then it just kind of, after, a, I think a couple mixtapes I did where I just start trying little songs. Yeah. And then once people start saying like, yo, he could rap. I figured the next, the next logical step is song making. So I start trying my, my hand at songs and it's just pretty much been a, um, and the evolving process. Like I'm evolving still to this day. You know what I mean? But I started late and I, um, where where I've reached and the time that I started, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. Um, but we all got room to grow. So I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm totally prepared to not be Drake popularity. You know what I'm saying? I'm totally prepared to not be Eminem or nothing close to that. Like, I just, I don't really, man, I don't really have motivation to even like rap music. You know what I'm saying? With my journeys and everything I've been through, I don't really have a reason to still like hip hop. But I, I mean, but I do. And I just do it now and I'm having fun. I'm not trying to be, uh, like if I'm in your top five, I'm in your top five. If I'm not, I don't care. Yeah, it's not like I, you know what I mean. I'm not really cold. It's just I'm I'm enjoying myself now. Like the burden is off of me as far as having to be, uh, the dopest MC or you know what I mean. Like I don't have no boundaries around me no more. I just I'm just having fun and whatever happens, happens. I'm with it, however it go. Do you feel like you know it's harder for you though, like having a brother who is a legend because like you know automatically people are going to compare you to him. Like, you know, like, uh, of course. I mean, that's normal, normal person behavior. That's how I look at that. Where people automatically look at me and be like, oh, but his brother's like this. So he ain't rapping at that level. So he must be in the shadow or whatever. It's like, bro, I, I rap better than a lot of people. I don't rap better than Royce. He taught me how to rap and he still works he still work like he ain't nobody. Yeah, you know but that's saying? like 99% so, of the, the planet. That's like unfair. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So yeah, if your brother's like Michael Jordan, you know. <laughs> yeah, but like if I'm working and I'm evolving to try to get as good as he is, this is the time that it takes to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To get close to where he is. So it's, it's like, I don't think people understand how much work that he's put in to be that good. But I mean, it's not like a, a pill that he can give me to make me like, you know what I'm saying? This ultimate rapper, like how he is, you got to put in the work. It's, it's simple. 
And I put in I put in a lot of work. I haven't put in nowhere near as much work as him, but I put in a lot of work. And like like the average person can't just come playing with me. Right. You don't you get what I'm saying? Now if Eminem come walking in the studio, you know what I'm saying? Uh, some sweat might start breaking out, but I'm gonna go for it, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I don't really worry about what people say too much nowadays because people don't really be knowledgeable. They just kind of just say stuff. So I'd be the fool to let something like that bother me. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Uh, speaking of people who like to say a lot of things, you know, uh, artists, you know, by the name of Talib Kweli, you know, he's uh, been very critical of you, like recently. Uh, how did that situation start? Oh, this is perfect. All right. Um, it started with um, this guy named A Villain. A villain is a Caucasian male. Let's just get that out the way. Uh, who posted under Talib Kweli's comment about uh, climate control? Yeah, climate change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a a villain disagreed with climate control. Now he didn't go over and say, "Hey man, fuck you, man." You know, climate yeah. controls. Oh, all all he said was climate con climate change is a hoax. It's That's, a hoax. That was the tweet. Not now, Talib Kweli's response is, "You're a Nazi." Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, was 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 he right for that? I don't think so, right? But a villain responded, trying to match his energy, mm -hmm. and call him. A, if anybody's a Nazi, is you, boy. Now, the boy thing, right? Right? You can't avoid it, bro. Yeah. You, they they didn't hear you say it. They saw the text. You know what I'm saying? If he would have been like in, in person, like, oh man, if anybody's a Nazi, it's you, boy. <laughs> it's like different. It come across <laughs> different. Yeah. But if you typing it, nigga, you fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> right? So while, while this is happening and we see it and we see that Talib Kweli turn it into, he magnified it as much as he could. Yeah. I have a I have a community called Alien Gang, right? Mm -hmm. It's a community of people. It's not rap a rap group. It's it's people from all over the world that identify with this community because it's rap music is building. Um, you know, people coming together and, and doing things together. Um, you know, that type of vibe is love. This is the I love you in sign language. Mm -hmm. That's Alien Gang sign right there. So, um, a villain identifies with that community, right? Um, so I'm trying not to skip over nothing because I wasn't, I wasn't any, even involved in it at all, right. right? Then he start tagging my brother. He tagged Chris Weber. He tagged Heaven Studio. And then later he tagged me and Mr. Cliff Note and Venomous and Jet Suede and rap, like all these people who don't have nothing to do with that, but he's like pulling us in. Yeah. So he added me maybe like 10 to 15 times before I even said anything. You know what I'm saying? So uh, after a while, it was just like, what is he doing? Like, is this real? Is that really him? <laughs> And then I found out he he called my brother about a villain. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, so this is him, <laughs> right? So I respond to him respectfully. I say, listen, bro, if if you want to have a respectful conversation in a DM, because mm -hmm. we don't know each other, you feel what I'm saying? Like you assuming some things. Um, I'm with having the conversation, bro, but like you grouping me with a bunch of people who you feel like you can just disrespect. Like, I don't operate like that. You know what I'm saying? Peace and love. That's how I ended it. His response. Oh, you're a Nazi lover and blah, 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 blah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> at this point, I'm just like, like, what is he trying to do here, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a grown man with children. I don't really feel like doing this. You get what I'm saying? Like somebody who's not even trying to get to a solution, he he on here playing. So I'm just like, man, 
So he added one of my OGs <clears throat> and and uh and OG told him like, man, these dudes ain't no Nazi lovers, bro. Like you tripping. I've been knowing them for the longest. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, oh, gee, if this is your homeboy, just tell him to stop playing with me because I'm not going to play with him. And I, I'm not saying that as a threat to, to, you know what I'm saying, like a physical threat. <laughs> like, I know what he's doing, bro. He's on the internet trying to troll. He's trying to drag attention to his page. That's why if you post something about him, he's rarely going to come over and say something but he's going to post on his page to try to get you to come over there and get all it. Like he's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not like you, you don't, you doing nothing and you being witty about it. It's just clear and obvious. Um, but, uh, so after he responded to me saying that it was more Nazi lover, bootlicker, uh, you get what I'm saying? So I was just like, you know what? <laughs> I don't feel like playing with this dude online. This is not something that I'm taking like is a real thing. Cause I, I never known him to be the type of person to like talk to niggas like that. So I'm not taking it like that. Right. Um, so I'm just like, I responded and my response was, all right, say no more. Yeah. That was it. Didn't, didn't disrespect him up until this point. Right. And, uh, Next thing you know, two days go by. I'm not paying him no attention. I don't, you know, I I, I go live with my Alien Gang platform, TBA with my boy Young Devious, Sirius Jones, Free the Wolf. Uh, and we go live and we we be a rapping and building, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like just getting some therapy in. And then when I finally check my mentions, he was mentioning me in every single comment, bro. Every time he respond to some random person, <laughs> my name is in it. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. he's now he's saying alien gang. And he's like, it's just nonstop, nonstop. He's posting your album reviews, like, you know. Um... Yeah, my, my very first album that I ever did with one bad comment. <laughs> now, if it was multiple bad reviews, he would have posted all of them. Yeah. So it's just like he trying to find some dirt on me and he obviously can't. So he just doing whatever he can. He just posted something with just a clip of me talking and without no context. It's just like he just reaching for whatever. <laughs> so for me, it's like, OK, he being petty. All right, well, let's be petty. So I, my, my response after the two days of him nonstop, he spoke with Royce. I don't know what they talked about. Yeah. Assuming that Royce should have told him, leave him alone. I don't I don't know if it was said, but if it was, he didn't listen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, the, so, like he he just like you know, Royce was just on um Talib Kwali's podcast. I was gonna ask you about like you know and stuff, uh you know, like how you spoke to your brother about that, like you know what I mean, and stuff everything, like how, what is the the thoughts? Because like I mean, it just seems like this is uh escalated pretty quickly. For something that was pretty much a tweet about climate change. Yeah, I think that he felt like he could control the narrative and we're not like popular people. Mm -hmm. So he could just walk right over us. He got 1.1 million followers. You know what I'm saying? He could just walk right over these motherfuckers. Who is these little bootlickers? And then when he engaged, he realized that it wasn't what he thought. Right. You got people dropping records on him. You got people creating animations of him and Dave Chappelle doing skits. It's like it's a lot of people just bombing on him. Yeah. And it's all in it's all fun. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, yeah. But, some of the jokes are are hilarious. You know, I mean, I think there's I've read some like, you know, that are kind of like below the bar that are still funny. You know, um, you know, his daughter has obviously been brought in the conversation and stuff. There's been like, you know, uh, some jokes and stuff and everything about just like uh, him and his sexuality. I mean, I think like, you know, and stuff and everything, it's kind of, it's kind of funny, you know, and stuff and everything. But like, you know, if you're in hip hop, I think you understand it. But I think like people outside of hip hop, they'll be like, you know, oh, like you're saying that's homophobic. You. Yeah. Okay. So like, um. You would have to like be specific 
on what exactly, because I think the homophobic thing is like a very touchy thing. Right. And be, be, being that it's like that, like we got to be specific. We can't just assume we got to know. You feel you know, what I'm saying? Like, so, uh, like, so you know for I mean? me, I, I, but, but just, just, for, just yeah. for me, just speaking yeah. for myself, if I want to disrespect somebody and I want to say something foul, I'm going to say it and you're going to know. You don't have to assume anything. So if I wanted to be homophobic, then I would be clear and I would stand on it. I'm not homophobic. We just, I got a whole community and it's people that's that's homosexuals in the community. I, who, who, you, who you choose to sleep with isn't my business. But when you start playing around with me and playing around with my name and you start saying certain things about me, and, and, and I'm going to start saying certain things about you. And all I'm saying is just certain things that I heard about him, right? Yeah. I, I didn't say it makes him a terrible person because of it, but it is something that he's in denial about. So that's that's where the the hurt comes from. But I'm not, um, I, nobody in my community is allowed to be uh, saying the F word and stuff like that. Like it's people, it's gay people that could attest to that. And and I don't wanna I don't wanna have to be in a situation where I gotta like have to always explain myself about certain things. Like I'm not like that. I'm trying to disrespect him. A lot of people don't don't understand the whole situation. They just watch what's posted and they believe it, and that's harmful on their behalf. You get what I'm saying? Like you gotta know what's going on before you start making your uh, your judgments and and putting up comments. And you only know a little bit of the truth. Like this man literally dragged me into something that didn't have nothing to do with me. Aaron Villain got called a Nazi. Nobody, nobody's going to say nothing about that. They're going to go to what old boy did because Kwali blew that up. And we was checking dude about it. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he sent dude a, 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 an apology in his DM. We told him, no, mm -hmm. you're going to do a public one. And it don't have nothing to do with him. This is about everybody else who may have took it a certain way. And he did it. Yeah. Then when he did it, dude start talking. Uh, uh, you uh, cool, but he you posted, need to. He posted you an need, apology. Like you can't. Yeah. Believe he's. You can't believe. He's so, <laughs> yeah, and he was saying. He was saying like now you now you gotta now you gotta um check kid vicious and venomous and all the people because for, for how they came at me and stuff like that it's just like man he delusional but you know what i'm saying it's just it ain't no solution that's what i'm saying it's not a beef it's not a beef i don't look at him in, in that light i don't look at him as somebody that i could beef with because like it don't that wouldn't really make any sense. I wouldn't get anything out of it. Ain't like people would be like, What? Vish Vish did what? Like, you know, nobody would really care about that. <laughs> you know, so um, I just I, I just I'm keeping it what it is, bro. I asked him multiple times. And even even when I before I got on my ignorance shit, I, I told him, dog, if you at me one more time and when these comments. I'm going to give you a full show. I'm telling you now. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. he, 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 nobody cares about your show, Nazi or Nazi lover. I'm like, all right. So I start wilding out on him. And I've been wilding out on him ever since. And, I, you know, it just is what it is. It is what it is. I'm having, I'm having fun, really. Yeah, I mean, he has a history of, like, you know, causing confrontations with anybody who disagrees with him. Uh, you know, like, you know, he got kicked off Twitter, you know, like, I think like, you know, because of um, harassing a black woman, allegedly, I don't know, like, you know, necessarily like, you know, um, the whole truth in that situation, like, you know, if it was actually harassment or like, you know, uh, someone like, you know, taking advantage of the Twitter role, rules, but like, you know, he, he regularly engages in these beefs with people. Yeah, I, I get it, but he ain't. Like, when have you ever seen him this engaged? Right. You get what I'm saying? Where he's yeah, trying yeah. to find little things. He posting old six-year-old videos that you got to scroll and scroll to find on people pages of a villain. He went, he went 
to through 2011 or some shit for an old album review, which that's the only one that exists. You feel what I'm saying? And he and he put that up. So it's just like he ain't doing nothing outstanding. He just kind of giving me free promo. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? He yeah, just giving yeah. me promo because anybody who looked me up, they not going to be sitting around talking about, oh, he's whack. You get what I'm saying? So I, I'm telling you, I'm getting followers and everything from this. Nothing on our side is being hurt. You know what I mean? Everybody's gaining followers. Everybody's gaining perspective of what's going on. It's just really making him look a certain way. He's the quote unquote legend or whatever, you know what I'm saying? He's the one that's supposed to have the, the full understanding of how to be and how to move. And he he getting lit up on the internet by some niggas that, you know what I'm saying? That was basically minding their own business and you thought that you could just come through and just wipe us out and oh, uh, would you just ain't going would you be <laughs> interested in, in having a conversation with him and you know kind of like discussing it like on his podcast like the people's party in the future or i i don't want to do it on his podcast we can have a conversation like i'm not trying to gain any i didn't ask for this yeah so before anybody think anything about any clout or anything like anything i'm not interested in nothing really but if he wanted to have a man-to-man -man conversation then i'm always down for that that's what all i've been asking for you get what I'm saying? Like, listen, it don't even have to be long. It could just be, yo, listen, leave me alone. I'm going to leave you alone. End of story. Cool? Cool. All right, peace. We don't have to, like, I'm not trying to, like, I don't want nothing from him. No. I don't want nothing from him. Man, like, you know what I mean? I totally understand that and stuff and everything. Like, ah, uh, you know, you've. You know, had issues though, like you know, with other people too in the past, like you know, and stuff. I think it was like uh, I was watching a video, like where you were explaining like the uh, Crooked Eye and Joe Ortiz situation, mm -hmm. and uh, not uh, it, Lupe Fiasco. My bad. Yeah. Uh, shit, it's probably both. Yeah, it's probably both. Um, yeah, really, it was just like it was. I go live on my on my page, and uh. It'll be people, them spies and stuff coming in because they know that I'm going to address certain things. Mm -hmm. And I go live, man. I, I've been going live for, for, for years now. And I've been building with people. We've been having positive conversations. People come in and talk about, um, you know, how to how to do credit, raise your credit score and, and, and stocks and uh what you got bitcoin and all that kind of stuff right <laughs> but none of that hits the internet you feel what i'm saying it's only when i get on my wild shit that people want to film it and put it out uh i had one where i was talking about crooked eye and joel ortiz right and i was wilding out i was angry you feel what i'm saying and uh they put it out and it, it start making me look like a certain type of person. Yeah. Because they just basing it off that clip. So it make me look like a, like a wild, rowdy, mm -hmm. unstable dude. You know what I'm saying? And people wanted to do interviews that had issues with me. And they thought I was going to come on. They, in, they, they shit wilding out mm -hmm. and being like unstable. But I was cool. I was calm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's who I am. But you know what I mean? Like I can wild out just like anybody else. And 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 uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Cause it's the same situation with maybe Lupe or maybe Mickey Fax. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, if you talk to me more recently, um, I'm I haven't I I that shit hasn't even crossed my mind. Yeah. Uh, any of those any of those situations. You get what I'm saying? I'm I'm well past that shit. This Talib Kweli situation is not something that I started, so niggas can't say nothing about me or to me about it. <laughs> if somebody want to say something, you better go talk to that man because he started all of this. So you got certain people that's tiptoeing around it. I, I don't want to be in it, but I don't want to speak up. Well, it's on me now, so I don't want to hear it, bro. I'm I'm gonna do whatever I, I'm gonna do whatever I feel like doing, and 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 the alien gang feel like having fun with it right now.
because we dealing with that type of person. So let's let's play. Let's play ball. Man, I know for the uh, Lupe Fiasco situation, you uh, dropped uh, Snaps in a Circle, which is like, you know, a fire song. I recommend for people to check it out. Uh, you know, do you plan on releasing any music like, you know, directed it to Lil Kweli in the future? Get your popcorn. <laughs> get your candy. Um, it's already, the show already just started. And uh, it's not going to just be me. Like, I'm telling you, we about to have fun with this. But yes, yes, I'm going to give him some words. That's what he want. And he said I couldn't rap. And I beg to differ, man. I just beg to differ. So it's only one way to prove that. So I'm going to give him what he what he asking for. I didn't even bring up music. That's another thing. I didn't bring up rapping. I didn't say whether I was good or he was bad. He brought up music. So, all right, you bringing music into it. Like, you just pulling me into whatever stuff. So I don't want to hear no clout chasing nothing. I'm going to just smoke this dumb nigga, and that's going to be it. That's going to be it. And I got respect for my, my hip-hop legends. Like, before this, I would never say nothing negative about Kwali. I mean, I never really listened to him like that, but I respected what he done for hip-hop. And if you would have asked me about him, I wouldn't have said nothing negative about that man, nor any other hip hop legend that exists in the world. But if if anybody just come doing certain things, I lose respect. And it's just like, man, all right, like let's let's play. I guess I never been bullied in my life, so I don't under. It's just a weird feeling for somebody to just try to like constantly pick at you. You know what I'm saying? weird yeah most definitely and stuff uh i think like you know that to live quality like you know he's an interesting um figure in hip-hop like you know i feel like you know uh i respect like you know his content yeah. in hip-hop but like i also yeah. see, you know the history of like him bullying people on the internet and like you know um it seems like you know that it, it was a relatively small situation and stuff and everything for people to like you know weaponize uh, anyone who disagrees with them, uh, like as a Nazi, it just doesn't seem like, you know, that's morally correct. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, you know, it's something like, you know, like it's a character flaw. Well, I mean, bro, if, if, if in real life there, there do, there are Nazis that exist. And why they out here still messing stuff up and really, and, and, and they, those are people who should be be fought against you just randomly just playing with that word like that's toxic that's not healthy bro but but do you i'm not judging you but keep that shit over there man like why don't don't come over here playing with me like i'm not saying that i'm nobody i'm just saying like bro like i'm not gonna let you do it I, I tried. I, I I let him get away with it for longer than what I would normally do. And I don't have no reason to show any restraint. Nobody's telling me to leave him alone. All of those Detroit OGs that he was trying to get in touch with, none of those guys said, bitch, chill. All of them, I'm not even, you know what I'm saying? But nobody vouched for him. Not one. So it's just like, I don't have to. I don't have to be nice to him, bro. Yeah. So I gave him fair warning. I just look at it like anybody, anybody would not appreciate that. I'm not a hothead for where we at right now. I tried to let it go. That's the part I want people to understand. I tried to let it go. Multiple attempts. You know what I'm saying? Once we get the three strikes, man, your ass is out, bro. You ain't no different from nobody else. Just because you just because you considerably a hip hop legend don't mean that you get more passes than any other man. You know what I'm saying? Your followers and shit like that, that they can't help you. Your music, it can't help you when we start talking about disrespect. Uh what's next for Alien Gang and Kid Vicious? Uh next is, you know, music, them records. You're gonna start hearing records. Go in there, Talib Kwali, because that's what he. That's the attention that he pulled in. You know, it's, a, it's some amazing MCs that can that can like bar for bar rap better than Talib Kweli. I'm sorry, 
you, I'm not talking about followers. I'm not talking about record sales. I'm not talking about none of that. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just talking about straight up bar for bar skill. And he's going to see that. He's going to see that. And whoever else want to pay attention, you'll see. You'll see. I'm definitely going to smoke him one time just just because he was playing with my name. Yeah, and most definitely, like, you know, uh, you shouldn't let anybody, like, disrespect your name. You know, um, man, Kid Vicious, it was, like, you know, a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, I enjoy, like, you know, chopping up. We just, like, you know, connected, like, you know, over Instagram, man, and you agreed to do the interview, and I appreciate you for taking the time, man. And uh, I uh, was checking out your music, man, and, like, I'm I'm really impressed, like, you know what I mean, with the Sikkim series, you know, all the way to the Purge, man. So, uh, like, you know, keep doing your thing. I appreciate my G. Um, thanks again for having me on the show. Uh, let me do a couple shout outs real quick. Uh, the whole alien gang, um, DT the basement, the whole basement gang, Sirius Jones, the whole Wolfway. Um, and shit, once again, I didn't start this. You know what I mean? Even, even, even a villain knowledge, those guys. They didn't start with the with the words, with the bad words. You know what I'm saying? A villain said what he said. We got on him. He apologized. You get what I'm saying? The knowledge situation, that's something different. We already passed that part. But uh, at the end of the day, man, Alien Gang is about building. We about networking. We about, you know what I mean? Like you, you we we build, we come together and build peace. We're not about all that tough shit. All that internet troll shit, that, that's not that's not us. You get what I'm saying? So don't let this, the people who don't care to look into it, don't let this make it seem like we are a, t- a type of way because you see our verbiage talking to somebody who constantly disrespected and everybody came to him peacefully. So, you know, it's yeah. love. Get <laughs> vicious, man. That's what's up. I appreciate you for taking the time, man. All right, my boy. Salute. Salute. Definitely.